want a side of liver cancer with those fries? And uh, here's the story. Uh, the findings of a 2022 analysis of uh, food packaging, wrap, basically the wrappers that your burgers and fries come in, you know, or that you carry out food from the restaurant, that kind of thing, uh, performed by Consumer Reports. Uh, they were looking for chemicals c called PFASs, PFASs. Um, in, in that, those packaging products came up with some pretty amazing uh, results. There's a link to the actual study itself uh, in, in my article. Uh, they found, uh, you know, some of these restaurants claim that they have changed these since then, but uh, Arby's paper bag for cookies, the Burger King paper bag for cookies, the Cava fiber trail for kids meals, the Chick-fil-A wrapper for sandwich wrap, McDonald's paper bag for french fries, Nathan's paper bag for side, sides, uh, Sweet Green's paper bag for Focaccio, Taco Bell's bag for chips, uh, all, all contained um, organic fluorine, which is an indicator of PFAS. Again, these companies are, are uh, rapidly, appear, apparently, uh, changing you know, what they're using, uh, apparently in response to consumer reports. But PFAS, P-F-A-S, this is an acronym per, for uh, perfluoral alkyl and perfluoral polyfluoral alkyl substances. There's a family of over 12,000 chemicals that were discovered in 1938 by a 27-year-old chemist by the name of Roy Plunkett. And what he did was he bonded carbon molecules or carbon atoms with fluorine atoms uh, to, to produce these six and eight chain uh, carbon, um, well, <laughs> perfluoralkyl substances, these PFASs. Uh, these, these substances hit Americans uh, uh, consciousness in a big way in the in, in basically in the 1950s, late 1950s, early 1960s, when 3M rolled out their nonstick uh, product called Teflon, and which is you know made with PFASs. And since then, now they're used to treat furniture, uh, particularly leather furniture. They're used to treat clothing to make them water resistant and stain resistant. Yeah, odds are your you know winter coat has been treated with PFAS. Uh, paper and cardboard to make hot drink cups, food containers, burger wrappers, and waterproof cosmetics. So, you know, at first we thought that, hey, these things never break down, right? They're indestructible. They're, they seem to be inert. You can't break them down with heat. You can't break them down with normal chemistry. Uh, you know, when, when bacteria are, are exposed to them, they, they, they can't metabolize them. So you don't, you know, they don't get broken down in landfills and things. They last forever. And, and, and you know, they thought this is a good thing. These, they're indestructible. So they, they uh, you know, they've made firefighting foam with PFASs on the assumption that if firefighters got coated with this stuff, it didn't make any difference. Now we know that, uh, you know, this wasn't such a good idea. In 2015, scientists found PFAS exposure lowers the immune response. In 2016, they found that they alter hormones that may have an impact on both pregnancy and male sperm. In 2017, they discovered that the chemicals could provoke childhood obesity and disrupt human hormones. In 2018, they found PFAS chemicals alter human metabolism so drastically that they're, Im they're implicated in both childhood and adult obesity. And in 2020, researchers found, quote, associations between, specific, between exposure to specific PFASs and a variety of health effects, including altered immune and thyroid function, liver disease, lipid and insulin dysregulation, kidney disease, adverse reproductive and developmental outcomes, and cancer. Now, DuPont has known since 1961 that these chemicals could produce at least some of these uh, downsides, shall we say, which led to this massive 2017 lawsuit that cost DuPont $670 million. I don't know if you saw the movie uh, Dark Waters. Mark Ruffalo was in it. In fact, when that movie came out, we talked about it here on the air. Did we ever get Mark on the air about that? We did. Yeah, that's what I thought. Um, you know, Mark Ruffalo is a good guy. And, uh, he, and if you haven't seen that movie, Dark Waters, it's, you can watch it for free on uh, YouTube. And it's also on Amazon Prime and Hulu and Showtime. And then this two-year study from 2016 to 2018 found PFAS in 99% of the residents of New Jersey they examined. Uh, it's in the air we breathe. It's been found in polar bears. And they estimate that the uh, water and municipal water supplies, water wells used by over 200 million Americans are now contaminated with these chemicals. Germany, the Netherlands, Sweden, Denmark, and Norway have all announced that they're going to ban PFASs. 
But here in the United States, the, the, the big chemical companies that make them have been playing, you know, kind of a cat and mouse game with regulators for years. Uh, you know, because the Supreme Court said that corporations are persons and they have the First Amendment right of free speech and money is the same thing as free speech, these chemical, excuse me, these com companies that make these uh, PFAS chemicals and use them have been pouring money into the campaigns of Republicans and uh, whining and dining these guys. So, you know, Democrats have been trying to regulate PFASs, PFASs, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure how you say the acronym, but uh, Democrats have been trying to regulate them. Republicans have been blocking all of those efforts. So finally in 2020, three years ago, the Democrats got into the defense authorization bill, which is the must pass legislation, right? If you don't pass this every two years, the army ceases to exist. It's, it's in the constitution, article one, section nine. And, or Section 7, as I recall. And uh, so they put this in, that, that any company that discharges over 100 pounds of PFASs into the environment every year has to report every single discharge to the EPA. So the Trump administration, they, you know, they wiped out the EPA. Over 700 scientists and administrators had left just during the last year of Trump's administration when he really declared war on the EPA. And uh, his EPA put into place a really elegant little loophole. They said, yeah, if you, if you, if you uh, release more than 100 pounds of this stuff into the atmosphere or into the environment, you have to report it. But only if it constitutes more than 1% of your discharge. So what the company started doing was they take one pound of PFAS, mix it with 100 pounds of water, and now the discharge, the percentage of PFAS in the discharge is under 1%, and they just pour it into the rivers. And guess what? Downstream, the, you know, people are using that water for their drinking supplies, and you can't filter the PFAS. It's very difficult to filter the PFAS out of water. Chlorine doesn't break them up, you know, the, 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 all the processes that they use. So... Here we are. The Republicans in Congress are continuing to block any legislation on PFASs, PFASs, and Democrats are trying to get something done, but they don't control the House of Representatives right now. All legislation has to originate in the House. And the Republicans are taking big bucks from these guys. I mean, really big bucks from these guys. Millions and millions of dollars from the chemical industry. So my suggestion is call your member of Congress, particularly if they're a Republican and say, you know, I understand that uh, Consumer Reports tells me that we are being exposed to cancer-causing chemicals in the food wrappings that we have, these PFASs, and I would like you to regulate them. And just see what your Republican member of Congress has to say about that. The number is 202-224-3121 for Congress. But, you know, once again, the Supreme Court stabs us in the back, right?